have an icebreaker before we go to the next topic for discussion, for all for presentation. And it is going to be delivered by a very important personality who is in our midst this morning and who has offered to engage our thoughts on a very important matter regarding our health. A, pro a pharmacist by profession, he has practiced as a pharmacist for the past 30 years. He's an entrepreneur and a lecturer also by vocation. The founder and CEO of Karma Group and Karma Education Project. His company is a member of Ghana's Club 100. He's the chairman of the Pentecost University College, a member of the National Development Planning Commission, a member of CSIR, and also he has a passion to educate the youth on entrepreneurship and the elderly on good health care. Today, he wants to educate us on the topic, what your doctor will not tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome to the podium, Dr. Michael Ejekum Adu. I want to talk to you about what your doctor will not tell you, which means about 99% of your good health is dependent upon you. We as health care providers, we only help you as you come to us. But within the healthcare, we believe in reducing pain and suffering to mankind. That's all that we do. That's our objective, to reduce pain and suffering. So if you get cancer and you are in pains, we try to help you out by giving you painkillers till you say bye-bye to us. There's no way we can cure your cancer for you, but we can reduce the pain that you undergo. I am so passionate to talk to professionals about health because two years ago, we had a cocktail with some bank institution. And at the cocktail, the bank officials, and I presume they were accountants, started to give us, the customers, some information about their products. Then the third speaker was the corporate banker, banking manager. He started to speak. And after about three minutes, I saw him pause. So I thought he was thinking about his vocabulary. And all we saw, he fell down, bam. The whole cocktail was destroyed. We took him to 37 military hospital and he was pronounced dead. This was in front of me, I saw him. Now from the research that I did, his friends that he was standing with said he complained that he has stage fright. Number two, I saw him as too puffy, too fatty. So two things added up to tell me that he had a heart attack. He was in his early 50s. So ever since I have thought that I should do more research on our lifestyle, and I realized that it is so important that we need to check ourselves because you can fall down any time and you can die at any time. Just last Easter, at one of the conventions, after the pastor has also spoken, we didn't see him again. He has also collapsed and he was taken to Kolebu and it took about three days before he came around. These are some of the issues that we have. Because of the way you, you work, your occupation, calls for diseases, it attracts diseases. Out of tension, out of the sedentary life, out of thinking, out of being hard work, you're a professional that you want to really do your work well, and so on and so forth. So ladies and gentlemen, this morning, I want us to just consider what is really 
your health, the general conditions. And it should be both the physical and spiritual. So that's the definition. The general condition of the body or the mind, especially in terms of either the presence or absence of illness. Sometimes you think that you are healthy, but all you know, something else is pressing you. Injuries or impairments. So in general, the condition of something in terms of soundness and vitality and the proper functioning of all your organs will determine the state of your health. So to be a healthy person is to be in good physical or mental condition. Physically, you could be all right, but if mentally you have problems, you are still sick. So what is this life? Life is health. And I'm saying that if you have good health, you are also having good wealth. And therefore, life itself is wealth, especially if you have the good health. And if life is health, and health is wealth, then by congruency, you are looking after your health will be the most important thing. Life is health, and health is wealth. So life can be wealthy if you are healthy. So take good care of yourself. And I hope at the end of my 10 minutes presentation, you would be aware that health is paramount. Let us talk about just these three things, physical, emotional, and social. When you talk about physical body, I wish you could go to Legon, East Legon area, there is a doctor with some scanning machines. Even though you think you are healthy, go there, they put you into the computer and the computer will tell you everything. There's a location where a healthy accountant went to this hospital. You put your fingers, or like uh, you are going to scan you, like biometric. And then the computer tells you that the guy has had worms for the past 35 years. Worms. And you say, oh, I don't feel anything in my stomach. You say, okay, look at, the, at your results on the computer. It's showing that you have a worm that has been you. So I think the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren have all been given to this man, which he didn't realize. So the worm expellent, they had to triple the dose to take away those generational worms in the body. <laughs> or you know, you also have it. And I must also emphasize that if you're having mental problems, not the, not the direct ones, like easily forgetting things, forgetfulness, can also be worms. Research has shown that sometimes the worms can lay their eggs in the bloodstream and then they get into your brain and all you know, you have mental problems and it's all worms. So you need to check your parasitic styles, the status of parasites in your body. I must also say that the malaria parasites, now you take anti-malaria, you think you are healthy, now you, you've solved your malaria problem. But then some of them, about majority, 60% are in your liver. So after some time, after a little exhaustion, you feel feverish again. They are all in the labor. Go to see your doctor for medication that will take away the parasites from the labor. Your physical conditions can also be accidental, either in the home or at work. If you get pains in your back, the spine, do not rush to hospital or do not rush to take painkillers. Just check the chair. These days, I know accountants, you are so fond of swivel chair. The way it's been shaped, a lot of people react to it, to the shape of the seat. Put a little pillow on it, and I think that's the wisdom behind the chiefs having those little pillows. It, re it really straightens up your spine. If you get it, check your seat in the office and check your car. And sometimes, just by putting the pillow, your pain will go off. If you are getting pains in the knees, 
and your shoulders. Check the shape where your air condition is blowing. Most of you have problems with your blood cells for which you are not aware, which the doctor is not aware, so will not tell you. And so you get a kind of rheumatism. And it's air conditioning that does that. So if it's your knee, then check. You see that the grill in your car, you put it down. So the air conditioning is blowing towards your knee. If it's your chest, you are getting chest pains. It means that it's directly facing you. It's, it can be dangerous. In your bedroom, to check. These days, the car, the bedroom, the office, everywhere air conditioned. And God in his own wisdom has put us in a tropical area. You must have the heat. So if you subject yourself to the cold weather like a temperate person, you'll get the temperate diseases. <laughs> so these are some of the warnings that I have to give you. Be careful air conditions. So occasionally, please go and stand under shade trees and breathe in all the oxygen that the trees will offer you. If it's emotional, that's talking about the brain. I'm saying that excitement, as professional accountants, you are supposed to be honest. So when you get guilty yourself, your conscience tells you that the zeros that I have added, if one day, one day comes out, I'll be in trouble. It means that you will panic till you will be caught. And if you are not caught, it means you will panic till you die. Sometimes I sympathize with you guys because it's only your conscience because you are so smart, the employer may never ever see it, but you never know. And so it gives you some kind of tension in your central nervous system. So please, 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 uh, uh, it looks as if uh, because of your profession and you want to be honest, be careful. Just be honest with yourself and you'll be free. The more freer you are, there is another chemical called endorphins, that is secreted. When you get happy, endorphin is secreted and that cools down your heart and makes everything work well. So instead of panicking, try to do things that you will be happy. Again, I've realized that the accountants in trying to show that they are professionals will also maintain that they are right. And if you insist on your right and the ego sets in, that's also equally bad. It gives you pride and then disrespect comes in and it gives you tension. You want to show discipline, adrenaline will be secreted. And so that's why the Bible is saying that humility, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the whole earth, will be yours. So as you are in your suit and pride sets in, and you want to do your work so well, please be careful because your brain is dictating to you how you should behave. You should be humble. Anger comes underneath the same uh, effect. When you are angry, the adrenaline is secreted. And it is for fight and flight. Adrenaline is for fight. When you are angry, you want to fight. So then the words keep on coming. And it goes on and on and on because you are fighting. Because adrenaline is making you wiser. Please be careful during that time what your tongue will say. Because later on you cannot withdraw all that you say. When you are sad or when you are depressed, it's about the same. These are all certain things that the doctor may not tell you, that even your coat itself is giving you such an ego that it would affect your behavior. If it's social, the level of finances, how can I be a bezer, an accountant, accountant general's office, a banker, and I'm poor? You can't see yourself to be seen to be a poor person. And that's the more reason why most of you have these societal problems. Then you want to change figures because you want to show off. But if you get one house, three bedroom and a hall, it should be sufficient. It should be, con it should be content. But then they keep on asking for more salary, more increase, increase in salary because they see exactly what you are doing every day, the sales that are going into the bank, so they want to ask for more. Please, what will be the level of the accountant's salary? If you discuss that, you let ask the employers, we should know. Go when our, our chartered accountants are demanding, then uh, you, are, you are scared as to how to answer him, how much you have to give him. Bottom line is that the whole company is sitting on debts. 
So why should we share profits, which you know is gross profit and not net profit? Because of the kind of work you do, which requires tension, you can only release tension by exercise. When you exercise, you realize that then the blood circulation will be better. And as you exercise and the circulation improves, it washes all the carbon dioxide, bad uh, nutrients from the body. Then you urinate, you go to the loo, uh, the feces, and then you'll be cleaning the body. Sweat is equally important. If you do not sweat during the day, it means that you are concentrating the fact that is in you, and it will be very bad. I want to just inform you that during the day, as you are listening to me, you walk, you talk, you'll be spending energy coming from the blood. At the end of the day, by 6 p.m., you would have lost one pint of blood. That's beer bottle of blood is gone through your daily activities. God in his own wisdom will make you prostrate in the night. You close your eyes, you can't smell anything, you are not talking, you are not walking, so that you'll be conserving the energy. Then the blood will be coming in. So by the end of the seven hours sleep, you see that one pint of blood would have come in through the food that you ate and then the oxygen that you are breathing in will give you the energy that is the blood for the night. Then you wake up and you are refreshed. If you do not sleep early as an accountant, it means that by 10, 11, 12, 1 p.m., you are still spending another pint of blood and that will be two bottles of beer because you have not slept. If the third day still you are awake, three to four pints of blood, you start to feel dizzy. And then any time you are walking, you want to hold something automatically. Be warned from this information I'm giving you that even though you are not sick and you don't see any signs of sickness, by way of your lifestyle, your occupation, your blood volume has come down. You start to feel bitterness in your tongue. And then at that time, you cannot even sleep. You want to sleep, but you will not sleep. The trick is that, then do some exercise, and then you'll be all right. Very, very important. Otherwise, you'll feel dizzy, and you'll fall down, and you might not wake up. Normal person after 25 to 60, your blood volume is 10 pints, 10 bottles of beer. And every day, one is gone, and you replace it by sleeping seven hours. That's the minimum. But I know at your level, some of you sleep three hours, four hours, and you, you believe that you have you are, you are, done well. As for me, I don't sleep. Oh, I work. Ah, uh, uh, Then the type of diet. I realize we've been brought to this part of the world. Surprisingly, the Greenwich Meridian passes through Tema, which is Ghana. The equator is also passing through our seashore. So the crossroad of the world is in Ghana. So personally, I believe God is a Ghanaian because the center of the world is in Ghana here. And for that matter, he has put everything to us, just like in Aden. Our food and the sunshine, the soil, the human beings, everything is perfect. So it's like paradise. So Ghana is an acronym, if you didn't know, and your doctor will also not tell you. That is glorious home all nations admire. <laughs> glorious home all nations admire. Shall we all say it? Glorious home all nations admire. That is Ghana. Now, if you were born in China, it would be a different type of food because some of them will not be grown here. Apples cannot grow here. The grapes cannot grow here. But here we have the plantain, the cocoa yam, the contumely, everything. And so, why don't you take what God has given you? So please, as an accountant, cocoa yam is good though. It has all the iodine in it to prevent your goiter and to set up all the homeostasis, that is to make the body balance. Contumely has all the vitamins under the sun. 
Please go for contumely and to be good for you. The yam, if you ask the fastest man in the world, he said he gets his energy from yam, from Jamaica. So please, yam is equally good. So let us avoid this uh, fried rice and indomie and that kind of stuff, and it will not help us. It's all talia. Alcohol. A little bit of alcohol wouldn't be too bad, but if you make it a routine that always three bottles of beer, whiskey, blah, blah, because you can, you've made it. Ah, my brave, you are saying, mommy, That can be dangerous. Smoking, I know most of you have stopped smoking. And those of you who were uh, high time smokers, uh, please, if you get the cancer of the throat, do not uh, associate it with the devil. You have caused it. Uh -huh. Most of the time, we associate most of our problems with the devil. But Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, he gave us the authority to go out there and cast out evil spirits and heal diseases. As I now, as I speak to you now, I'm de delivering somebody. May the people say amen. amen. So, loneliness. Please don't allow your occupation to take away the fun from the home. I beg you. The lady accountant is so serious that he has for, she has forgotten her household chores. And then the children are left at the mercy of the house helps. The men are also so serious they stay at the office for a long time leaving their home. And when they speak, the women also have to give you a cheek. And when they give you a cheek, you say, then I will not I pay my chop money. And then tension comes at home. Then you take the tension to the to the office. Office, there's tension with the zeros. Then you go back to the home with the tension. So please, these ones, you have to avoid. Be happy, be happy as an accountant. It's a noble profession. Everybody respects you. Yes, whatever it is, you see money. And when you see it, out, it's 50% your own. <laughs> eh? Others will, will never even see anything. Else. But you, you have the privilege to see it. It's good enough. Be happy. Because at your level, from 40 above, you need to have a good home where your wife and your children, your husband, can always relate to you. I recommend this film, The Unorganized Manager, for you to watch. The Unorganized Manager. It's in series, series one, two, and three. And maybe for the profession, you can also call for it, it's about 1,500 pounds per, per film, the unorganized manager, so that you get it as an association and then you, you show it to your members, whereby the professional was so busy that eventually he died and went to heaven. And Peter asked him that, you thought you did well, you didn't do well. So he took him back to earth and showed him how he behaved. Very, very beautiful film. Finally, I would say that, please check your blood pressure. Almost every month, check it. If you don't have the machine, please try to buy one. It's not expensive. And if you can check every week, that'll be fine. The normal pressure would be 120 stroke 80. If you get it 140, 90, 150, 100, you are in trouble. Then you are becoming hypertensive. If it is 60, 50, 60, 40, then you are hypotensive. Your blood pressure is also very low. It can equally kill you. But most of you, your lifestyle that is sedentary, sitting down at one position for a long time in your life, plus the fact that you don't do exercises, plus the bad food, the diet that you take, creates fat in the blood vessel.